Hello, Andrew. How are you? Good. 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 Great to meet nice you to too, meet Mr. Booth. Thank you very much for taking time to talk to me. So now, when did you start to learn piano? Um, so basically what happened was um, I started when I was six because um, I attended a lot of uh, my brother George's lessons. Um, and I think at the time I wanted to like, I was a very competitive person and I wanted to beat him <laughs> at what he did. Sure. Um, so I guess at the beginning, it started off as a sort of like uh, competition. But um, I think as I grew even older and continued uh, working and uh, improving at piano, um, it sort of really grew on me. And um, I think I developed like much stronger like, connections to music um, and the piano as a whole, uh, as a result of just persevering and um, growing and listening to more music. That's a great experience. So first it was uh, actually inspired or oh, whatever, whatever you feel like you need to challenge your brother. Huh? So now you grow to like the piano eventually. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely really, really love it. And it's like uh, a core part of my identity, I would think. You know, a lot of uh, young kids probably uh, experience something like a pressure from their parents. I know you have a wonderful parents, you know, you have two brothers that grew up so wonderfully. So was that all motivated by yourself or someone has to guide you? Or even sometimes your parents have to push you to do things. I will say uh, discipline did not come easy to me as a child. So um, in the beginning, um, of course, like my parents uh, both had to like tell me whenever I had to practice and like always constantly remind me or um, sometimes yell at me to, to do things. But um, I think as I uh, entered high school, um, I tried to like both find um, something like that I could uh, follow myself in terms of a schedule. And also I looked to some of my friends um, who were like, also excelling um, just to see what I could learn from them in terms of how they uh, managed to balance all their time. Um, but I will say like there was also a lot of help from uh, my parents. Do you do any sports yourself? I wish I did, um, but I guess like very like recreationally um, with my brother whenever we have time in the afternoon and we were sick and <laughs> sick of practicing for a bit, um, we usually go out um, and there's a local middle school and we just play soccer there um, at their field and, mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's cool so uh growing up uh you doing like music seems uh, uh uniquely because uh, you and your brother are exceptionally uh good with piano because uh, you achieved higher level um i was wondering now you have at the same time as other students have right and you manage to practice piano, but you achieve much higher than average. Of course, you have talent. I, I, I mean, of course. <laughs> Besides this, what other factors uh, actually contributed to your achievement? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I'd say there are like uh, many different small factors that played a role, but I'd say the most important for me were, um, I guess, one starting early, but not only starting early, but having um, the parents. Uh, like to discipline me and uh, push me on and uh, always like sit by me while I practiced um, in order to like uh, instill high standards in me. Oh, a, a very huge factor for me was um, having uh, great teachers like to guide me. Yeah, that's a great way. As we all know, you know, in order to achieve in music, we need the talented kids and we need the supportive parents. Of course, we need the great teachers. Uh, tell us about a little bit more about your first teacher and second teacher and those experiences. Who are they and how their teaching style is? Sure. Uh, so I started off um, with Dorothy Shi, um, mm -hmm. who unfortunately yeah. right, who unfortunately passed away recently, but um, she was like one of uh, the best teachers that I've ever like um, practiced with and learned from. Um, she basically uh, established all the fundamentals starting from, um, I guess, like basic scales, um, arpeggios, Hannon, Cherney, um, all of those um, core fundamentals. Um, and she really like drilled them into me like every week for lesson. Um, and she was like such a patient and uh, caring soul. And um, she literally uh, every week, she would always like reward uh, George and I with 
um, popsicles or like <laughs> Coke for uh, like just uh, playing well and uh, continuing to improve. Um, Great. Your second teacher uh, was? Yes, uh, Hua Kyung Bien. Um, she is a professor at the New England Conservatory. Yeah. Um, and uh, she taught George also from a very young age. So um, I didn't start learning from her until I was 13. Um, but she um, not only developed uh, that technical side that um, uh, Mrs. She uh, improved for me, but she also taught me like the importance of thinking, I guess, beyond what was on the notes uh, on the page um, and mm -hmm. uh, bringing in some of uh, your own interpretation and your own uh, inspiration into the piece, uh, which I really appreciate. And yeah, that's two very, very impressive teachers. Let's uh, switch a subject. So you are such an achiever in music it's very impressive. And uh, when decided you uh, would go to Harvard and uh, pursuing different uh, subject and also keep the music as a second consideration, how they uh, will factor your music achievement? Do you have to, uh, of course, you provide a resume and uh, which stayed what you have done in music, but uh, do you have to audition or or you submit any kind of uh, proof you actually can do that <laughs> right no that's uh that's a great point um what they allowed us to do was to submit um a few videos um and uh through their i think that they have their own system for submitting videos but um i sent a few of my like competition videos and i think they get somebody in the music department um to like watch them and assign a score and i think that plays a role in uh that extracurricular score um and also for the nec component um there are like several um auditions one's a video recording and the other is an in-person like 30-minute audition in front of all the piano faculty i see so for uh as you get in to the program the harvard actually provides you to the academic side and he also admitted to nec new england conservatory your teacher is from actually from New England Conservatory. Is that right? Yes. Yes. It's a com combined school program. Yeah. Um, there, yeah. It's a joint or a dual degree program. Oh, I see. So when you graduate, you will get a Harvard degree and also NEC degree. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. So um, it's a actually a five year program. So five four year years program. at Harvard, you get your bachelor's, and then that fifth year in NEC, you get your master's in music. So this is your, what, what year are you in right now? Um, just finished my third, going into my fourth. So how's the load as a due degree? I know I, I heard a lot of Harvard kids just doing one thing, they just like uh, stress out. And then you're still doing the both majors. How that turns out to you? So there is, I think um, you get to choose how much um, to commit to each side. Um, on my end, I think I try to, uh, try to achieve like a healthy amount of both um, academics and music. So on the academic side, um, I'm a pre-med student, um, hoping to maybe be, become a doctor um, in the future. Gotcha. So I have to take like a bunch of um, science heavy or um, pre-med heavy classes, such as like um, physics or like organic chemistry, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and on the side, uh, I try to practice like I guess three to three to four hours a day, uh, more wow. on the three side. But um, yeah, I still and I still try to uh, keep learning new pieces. But I definitely know like um, conservatory conservatory students who have like all the time to practice every day. Uh, they definitely get to learn more pieces than I do, and um, I guess like go at a faster clip um, than some of uh, some people like me in the dual degree program. Great. So during the pandemic time and uh, you started the program to help the elderly people can you tell us a little bit more about that program oh um so that is um called harvard care um basically that program uh was started during the pandemic um uh, with uh, my girlfriend um, in order to um, address i think needs in the elderly community um, in terms of um being alone and uh, not having people to reach out to during the pandemic. 
um, which could be definitely really difficult. I know everybody struggled with that at some point, mm -hmm. uh, just coping with that loneliness. So, and uh, basically we reached out to a bunch of nursing homes in order to um, call uh, a bunch of their coordinators, uh, their volunteer coordinators there to arrange weekly phone calls um, or Zoom calls uh, with their seniors and basically uh, not only just keep them company, but get to know them and um, develop these long lasting uh, intergenerational relationships with them, um, which I think uh, were def was definitely something uh, that we thought could help um, alleviate the pressure and burden of being lonely during the pandemic. Wow, that's so nice of you, you know, thinking the seniors and help them in the real way. Yeah. Um, I'm really impressed with what you, you've done uh, as a young age so far. So now if you were going to advise some other students still in the back in the high school or middle school, even in the elementary school, uh, what you would suggest or what you would say to them in order to, you know, uh, get the best out of them to aim to the future. Right. Um... For me, I would say that um, the goal and uh, your goal in life should be um, not to just do it because you're forced to or to do it because like you begrudgingly um, want to like use it for something else, but do it uh, because you really want to do it. Um, find some passion or some type of skill or hobby that uh, you, you are willing to commit many hours a week to doing uh, that you are um, you could like sacrifice like a bunch of other activities for um, that you know like you could see yourself doing in the future and stick to it um grow um, and continue fighting for it because um i i in my opinion uh that intrinsic like motivation to do these types of activities is uh, people like at the head of those fields um, do great things um, so i would say just focus on uh, finding what you love to do Great. So that's a very great advice to not only doing things, but you have to have a passion to do it. Eventually, uh, the passion will motivate you to you know, continue mm -hmm. and uh, to achieve. That's a, such a good advice to young people. Thank you so much. Well, that yes. will uh, conclude our, our conversation. Thank you so much. Best wish to you and your brother, George. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.